Hi folks, Steve here, and let's talk Mad Max Fury Road. Um, it's kind of a, a ridiculous title, in a way, considering that this film, as this poster would suggest, is not really a film about Mad Max at all. Um, and it does seem a bit ridiculous that uh, Tom Hardy would be named before Charlize Theron um, on the poster and in the film. Charlie's is um, clearly the star of the film and the better of the two. Um, and isn't Charlie Charlie's there on a, a bigger box office star anyway than Tom Hardy? Like, wouldn't um, you want to put Charlie's Theron's name before Tom Hardy? Anyway, I'm nitpicking here, and there's really no need to do that. Um, the future belongs to the mad, as the um, the tagline for this poster would suggest what's interesting about the poster and the reason why i've got the poster here is to sort of ask the question what in this poster identifies itself as an australian film what we will see across this course in looking at the promotional posters for the films that we're looking at is there's always a sense of australia or often there's a sense of australia that's coming through the publicity material, right? Um, you know, the Sydney Opera House is this like this iconic Australian symbol, um, which is often used in film promotions, um, advertising, um, uh, advertising themselves. Um, you know, to be set in Sydney and also to be set in Australia, but in this poster. It's very hard to see anything that's Australian. Firstly, um, the two actors aren't Australian. Tom Hardy isn't. Neither is Charlie's. Um, Mad Max, I suppose you could say, is a name tied to Australia. But there's no Australian iconography here. There's no Australian landscape here. Um, so I think suggested by this poster is the film is less interested in itself as an Australian film and more interested in itself as an international film. And through that, you could certainly make an argument, an international Australian film. Um, but it's, you know, this isn't a let's walk down kind of Sydney Harbour kind of film, which is kind of interesting, um, I think, and might suggest why the film did so spectacularly well um, on a global scale. Okay, so how or why is this film Australian? And I'm really interested in Mad Max Fury Road, why is this film an Australian film, right? Now, there's a case for and there's a case against whether this film is an Australian film or is not an Australian film. So the case against. Um, now, the film, in this film, it has left-handed um, driving vehicles, right? And this is the first time in a Mad Max movie this is the fourth Mad Max movie. It's the first time they've had left-handed driving vehicles. What I mean by that is the steering wheel is on the left-hand side, you know, the American side, and not on the right-hand side, which is where we put our steering wheels in the country, right? So that would suggest it's, you know, predominant market here. Uh, like I said, it's starring Tom Hardy, who's English, and Charlie's Theron, who's um, South African. So it doesn't have any Australians in the, the two leads. Um, I suppose you could make an argument, and George Miller, the director, did make an argument that, well, Mel Gibson is actually American. Um, but I think that argument's kind of bullshit, really. I mean, Mel Gibson, he was born in America, but he, he was raised in Australia. He lived in Australia. He did for a while have an Australian accent, ladies and gentlemen, um, which kind of um, disappeared um, when he went and did a few films in America. But, um, you know, Mel Gibson was certainly an Australian for um, for a long time. And when he was cast in Mad Max, he was certainly playing an Australian and he was identified as an Australian. Uh, the film was shot in uh, Southern Africa, Namibia, I think is how is the correct way of pronouncing the actual place. It was going to be shot in Broken Hill. And then there was this crazy storm and then they 
uh, all the sets they wanted to use were ruined, and so they moved it to southern Africa. Um, so, so far, you've got cars that don't look Australian because the steering wheel is on the wrong side. You've got the two actors who aren't Australian, and it's shot in southern Africa. It was inter interestingly, when the film was going to be shot in Broken Hill, right, Bert Newton was going to be in the film. Now, Bert Newton wasn't going to be Mad Max. Now, that is a Mad Max I'd want to see. Bert Newton as Mad Max. Um, Bert Newton wasn't going to be Mad Max, but he was going to have a key role in the film. And again, I want to see, I want to see a Mad Max film with Bert Newton. That is my, it's on my wish list, ladies and gentlemen. I want to see Mad Max, maybe Mad Max 5 will star Bert Newton. Um, but the film was moved to Southern Africa, okay? So the film uh, wasn't even shot here. Uh, most of the budget came from America. And um, it was the film was made predominantly for an international audience. The lack of dialogue in the film, the film was a, an extremely visual movie, uh, and that's because it was really trying to tap into China. And China, um, there's been real problems in um, trying to get into the Chinese market um, because China only accepts a certain amount of international films um, every year. It's not like here where we'll just sort of take any film um, for audiences. They're, they're very, um, it's very restricted what films they'll take. And Mad Max was a film that was clearly made for the Chinese market with a lack of... Um, sort of English dialogue, um, there is some, a little bit of dialogue, but not much. The film is pretty much told very visually. Um, so a number of these things would, you know, suggest that the film is very international in what it's doing. Um, but the film is representing a kind of Australia, a, use, a, a sort of this um, apocalyptic, uh, dystopian Australia, but Australia nonetheless. So it's playing with myth and myths of, of Australia. But... Um, you know, that would be the case against that the film really shouldn't be understood as an Australian film because of, you know, all the things it's doing. Now, the case for why the film is Australian is because, um, well, there's a few little, little, little things. So, Australian crows or ravens are used in the Mad Max films, right? They're used in all of them. And they're also used in Fury Road. And they symbolise death and destruction. So, uh, if you're watching a Mad Max film and you see a crow, um, be warned. Uh, the film is considered an exploitation movie. We'll um, we'll discuss the term exploitation. Uh, Quentin Tarantino, who is someone, um, thankfully, that won't be explored. In this course, even though I'm sure Quentin Tarantino himself would love to be the subject of an Australian cinema course, um, he he reckons he dubbed the term exploitation. He says it's his term. Um, it's not his term, obviously. It's a kind of stupid term, if you ask me, but it is a term, and it's it's to identify a particular type and style of genre making that was happening in Australia in um, in the 1970s and very, very, very late 1960s and also um, into the 1980s when the Mad Max movies began to appear. To understand the film, as people like Adrian Mutt will argue, is you have to understand the exploitation genre and movement and things like that. So you have to actually put it into that Australian cinema context for it to work. Um, now, there's a weird scene um, where the war boys and in Morton Joe, uh, before battle, they spray their lips, right? And it's like this kind of ri really kind of religious ritual thing, right? And they say they're going to enter the gates of Valhalla, shiny and chrome, right? And chroming is an Australian slang um, which was used by uh, people in Vietnam, uh, before they went to battle, they would kind of spray their face and um, to um, ensure that they weren't sort of um, contaminated by, you know, chemicals and things like that. Um, and that's what it was termed. So that's why it, it's there. Um, uh, so there you go. 
this film is part of an Australian franchise. Like the the first three Mad Max films, you know, although one of them had Tina Turner, they are very Australian in what's going on with the accent and everything that's happening. You know, very very Australian. So. Uh, like the exploitation thing, you actually have to understand it as a, a part of the franchise. Uh, the director is Australian. The crew are predominantly Australian. A lot of the actors are Australian, uh, not Burt Newton, unfortunately, who does not appear in the film. Um, now, Alex Heller Nichols, uh, she said Tom Hardy is faultless in his reimagining of the iconic Max. And what she is essentially saying, if I can paraphrase her, is that Tom Hardy is faultless in his playing Australian, his, his idea of playing an Australian, performing Australia. And we're going to look at this, um, you know, in other films, um, this whole idea of performing a sense of Australia. Um, but she argues that just the way he moves, the way he is, the way he bees is very, you know, in that Australian tradition of um, the Mel Gibson Mad Max. Uh, Mel Gibson was originally going to be in um, in Fury Road um, when they were going to make it. Uh, this was sort of the early 2000s, um, but then it didn't happen. And then um, Mel Gibson went bonkers, and I guess George Miller had no interest in him then, as most of us don't. Um, something else about Mad Max, you know, as far as the Australian franchise go, is that the way that the iconography from the original is kind of there in in the new one. You know, the car is, is kind of there. It's a sort of hotted up car, but the car is there. The jacket um, is, is pretty much that um, Tom Hardy's wearing. It's not it's not an exact replica of the jacket. It's not the original jacket, but it's it's very 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 similar to the jacket okay and the point is that both the car and the jacket in the original want you to go back and watch um or do not watch but rethink the original and see this as part of the series um elizabeth avram is uh, just this quote i think is kind of is quite relevant to um fury row with acceleration of globalization australian audiences experience of cinema as australian has shifted beyond the textual into complex relationships between a film and its context and the entire milieu of filmmaking. And this that quote is absolutely relevant for a film like Fury Road. If you listen to George Miller, like George Miller is actually saying that the real influence for this film was like the Buster Keaton shorts, you know, a film like The General, which is actually an action film, um, which is, you know, kind of interesting. Um, to think about but the film is very international in its endeavor and its hope um, and it it asks us to rethink how we define a film as Australian if we're going to consider this film as Australian how and why and what does this do with our definition of an Australian film okay um, Ben Goldsmith um, you know the outward looking uh, cinema um, other weeks um, explore Ben Goldsmith in more detail um, but he's arg arguing that the national is essentially a redundant term because it's very limiting in um, what we can do and um, he Ben Goldsmith sort of talks about Mad Max and Fury Road and how this film represents a change to the industry because what happens is in the 90s is you've got government policy, which is a very inward-focused policy, which is really about um, making very small um, films that really detailed and discussed and explored, you know, topical Australian issues. Right? And what's happened in the last 20 years is those policies have changed from the government from Screen Australia. And now the government have an outwardly-looking um approach to the cinema which is in a way kind of go and get your own money you know form your own co-productions um don't rely on our money for so much and um you know with cuts um you, can, you can't really rely on uh you know government funding for much um you know as far as getting films up in the way that they were a couple of years ago so 
he would argue, and he does argue, that Fury Road couldn't actually happen until sort of the last 10 or 20 years because of what George Miller wanted to do in creating this international film. And if you think of this film in comparison to something like Baz Luhrmann's Australia, you know, they're very interesting in um, the way that they're representing a global Australia for a global audience. Um, speaking of Baz... You know, I mean, it's interesting because Fury Road is a film that represents Australia. Now, it might, it's not shot in Australia, and you can say it's a bizarro, crazy, bonkers Australia, uh, but it's Australia. The Great Gatsby, which is a film that Baz Luhrmann made in Australia and was nominated for a bunch of Australian AFI awards, is a film which is essentially depicting America, right? Um New York. It's not representing Australia. So think about that and how, um, you know, Fury Road is a very different sort of Australian film. Um, and then the question becomes, is this film, is this film actually a, uh, you know, The Great Gatsby, is that an Australian film? And again, is it all about on-screen representation or is it about all the different things that we're doing within the industry? Other films, um, you know, like The Railway Man, also The Rocket. Uh, the Rocket is an Asian film. Um, uh, I think it's set in Vietnam. And, uh, you know, both of those films are essentially funded from Screen Australia. The development happened through Australia, um, you know, directors being Australian. Um, but they're, they're not set <coughs> in Australia. They're not actually shot in Australia, those two films, uh, where The Great Gatsby is. So there's a whole different range of how we think about um, films uh, across the course. And there is an image of Nicole Kidman. And um, you've really got to... I was thinking about this the other day, but you've really got to... Um, like, to think of, like, the contemporary Australian film industry is like you've just got to think of Nicole Kidman. You know, you look at her filmography and what she's done and where she's gone, it's it's like she is the evolution of the Australian film industry. But I'll talk more about that um, in weeks in, you know, in, in other weeks. Okay, final thought. How do we watch this film as an Australian? As Australian, sorry. How do we watch film as an Australian? How do we watch this film as Australian? What does the film say about the Australian nation? Right? What does the film say about the international Australia? And how is that different? Does this differ from how we watch other Australian films? So does this question and challenge how we watch other Australian films? Do we need the context of the other Mad Max movies to read this as Australian? Right? So say this is a standalone film, right? And the other films didn't exist, right? Is this still a film that we're engaging with and watching as an Australian film and celebrating in the way that we did um, with it? Because a lot of... I could be wrong. But a lot of the initial interest in the film and excitement, enthusiasm with the film seemed to be the fact that it was about a sense of nostalgia. It was about a sense of going back to those Mad Max films that we seem to love so much. Um, okay, how is important is the nationality of the director, right? So say George Miller didn't make this film, you know, would it be... Um, would it be embraced in the way that it has been? And also, historically, how will we consider this film as Australian? Like, are we going to look back at this film and, you know, talk about the importance of this film as an Australian film? Um, what does it tell us about Australian culture? Or does it even matter? Does it even matter for an Australian film to be telling us about Australian culture? And the, the question really comes down to us, why do we watch Australian films? Or why do we ignore Australian films? What is it about um, Australia, Australian films um, that resonate so well with us? And why this film? Um, why this film? Why was it celebrated in the way that it was? How do we engage with it as an Australian film? And how does it muddle a very often neat categorization of what we have um, as an Australian film. So I'll be fascinated to hear what you have to say about this film, whether you consider it an Australian film, whether you consider it, consider it an international film, whether you consider it an international Australian film, or maybe just consider it all of those things. Um, okay, I'll, um, I'll leave it there. It's going to look great on the big screen, Mad Max, um, you know, beautiful Blu-ray. Um, so I, I'm certainly looking forward to um, seeing it um, um, on the big screen again. Okay, um, see you soon. Bye for now.